Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I normally don't paint the eyes on my miniatures. With the scale differences involved, I reckon you don't tend to see a real person's eyes if you're standing on the table looking that sort of simulated distance at one another. But sometimes you do want to put the extra work into a miniature because it'll just look cooler when you take some photos of it or you really want to push it to look a little nicer. So what I'm going to show you is actually quite an old method, but there's always a first time that you find something out. Now this is straight up the easiest method I know of for painting eyes, so I'm not even going to list the paints in the description because they do not matter this time. Really quick one for today, let's get started. Now I tend to find as painters that we think of eyes as being an almost final step, but it definitely doesn't have to be that way, and this I would suggest is going to make things much easier. So what you'll see here is I've done all of my base coats. At the moment there's no shades, uh, everything else has been tidied up. The last thing to do at this point is the eyes. So I'm going to start by getting a little bit of black, and I have watered this down nice and thin so that it's flowing easily. What I'm going to do is start off by painting a thin black line into the eye socket, and I'm not too concerned if things go awry here. Now I've been pretty lucky there, I haven't really made a big mess, but what I'd suggest is paint past the edge of the eye. Don't try and get it painstakingly correct, it doesn't matter if you splurge a little over the side, and it will actually help with this step. Over the top of the black we're going to paint in some white. And don't worry if your coverage here isn't perfect. So let's get in very carefully here, paint a white line over the top of the black. Now, interestingly enough, if you do want to do eyes as a final stage, that's pretty much it. What you can do is the black line, and then two tiny dots of white either side of it to create the black pupil in the center. Uh, but that relies on having a pretty good control of the brush, and hands that remain still, so uh, I'm not always convinced I can do it myself. We're going to go back to our black, and this time we're going to do a little horizontal line for the pupil. You don't want to leave... Uh, the top and the bottom of the eye too prominent, uh, you know, because otherwise she's going to look like she's really opening these eyes and staring quite crazy. That was all going just a little too smoothly, and I wondered if I was going to have a chance to show you <laughs> the tidy up stage, and then a big splat on her cheek. But now you can go back to the base color for your skin and carefully approach the edge of the eye and tidy up. And as easy as that, there you've got your eyes. Now just by deciding where you're going to paint the black line in the eye, you can change where the miniature is looking. In this case I've kind of got it looking off to the side here, it seems to suit the pose. But there's one last thing I want to show you, and it comes to when you're shading the miniature. So you're shading your skin however you normally do. In this case I've got Reichland Flesh Shade and a little contrast medium. And like I normally would, I'm just going to go straight over all of the face. So I'm going to end up putting some of this into the eye sockets. But while it's wet, go back to your nice fine brush and you can wick away the shade that's collected over the eyes. You don't want to pull it completely out of the sockets because you do want a little bit of shading. But the eyes themselves you can essentially dry off by moving the shade around while it's still wet. So there my shade is dried and by wicking away the excess in the eye sockets, I haven't lost any of what I painted. And that is really it. It doesn't matter if you're giving the whole miniature a one over shade like I normally do with something like Agrax Earthshade or Strong Tone, just that final extra step will really help keep all of the work you've done intact. So what I'm going to do now is paint the rest of the miniature, and it's kind of a paint the rest of the owl style thing here, but I want to get her finished off so that you can see what it all looks like in context. And there we have it, our finished dwarf with her eyes painted. And this, I know, is jumping ahead quite a bit, but the core of what I've just shown you is, well, everything. You don't have to do a lot of extra work, and it works with any miniature. So no matter what it is you're painting, next time, before you get to all of that complex shading and highlighting on a face, try just blocking in the eyes and starting out like this. I guarantee you, it'll work. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23Games for the light and sound equipment. 
as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free, drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked down there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.